Hello friends, dear learners and my dear student. First of all, I welcome you on the lecture of Ultraviolet Visible Spectrophotometry. I am Dr. S. R. Lovely, working as Associate Professor in the Department of Chemistry. Student, in previous lecture, we discussed Lambert's law, that is a fundamental law of photometry. In today's lecture, we discuss the Beer's law. Therefore, statement of Beer's law. Beer's law. When a beam of when a beam of monochromatic light, chromatic light is allowed to pass through. A transparent medium, medium. The rate of the rate of change in radial power, radial power with the concentration. of the medium of the medium is directly proportional to directly proportional to to incident radial power incident radial power In case of Lambert's law, when a beam of monochromatic light is allowed to pass through the transparent medium, medium, the rate of change in radial power with the path length. In case of Lambert's law, in case of Beer's law, it is rate of change of radial power with the concentration. This is the main difference between the Lambert's law and Beer's law. Therefore, again, mathematically, here it is minus dP by dC is directly proportional to P. That means here, in this case, dP is a small change, small change in radial power. db sorry dc is small change in concentration of medium and here negative sign indicates that negative sign indicates that indicates that radial power radial power decreases with concentration. Therefore, here in case of Lambert's law, we consider a layer system. Decrease the path length of each layer linearly and then we observe that transmittance decreases exponentially. In that case, we consider each layer that have an identical concentration. That means we increase the path length at constant concentration of the solution. Now in Beer's law we kept the path length constant and we can linearly increase the concentration. Therefore here according to this law, here according to Beer's law it will be like this. Therefore according to Beer's law if the path length, if path length is constant and the concentration of medium, concentration of medium that is increased, that is increased linearly. Then, suppose 
for example, this is the first layer here C therefore 100%, 50% absorbed, 50% transmitted. Suppose the second layer where 50% falls on this, here it is 2C means 12.5. Then here third layer having 3C therefore 12.5 that will be gives 1.56 and here 4C this 1.56 gives the 0.08 in this case here first layer acts of 50% then second layer acts of 1 fourth therefore concentration is double here as concentration double therefore here it is 12.5 12.5 1.56 then 1.56 1.56 Again here if we plot the graph of transmitters T is equal to again P upon P0 versus C then we also have a exponential relationship. That means here as concentration in the medium that is increases linearly we also observe the exponential decrease in transmitters. Therefore, transmittance is not directly proportional to concentration. Transmittance is not directly proportional to path length. Transmittance is not inversely proportional to path length. And transmittance is not inversely proportional to concentration. There is exponential degrees in transmittance. Therefore, here, similar to Beer's law, we have this relationship. And then we can derive this Beer's law for determination of absorbers. Therefore, mathematically or by rearranging this, we have minus dp by p is equal to k1 into dc. Therefore, on integration, minus dp by p, p0 to p is equal to k1 into integration of dc, c is equal to 0 to c is equal to c. Then, here this integration is equal to minus ln p p from p0 to p here it is k1 into c c from 0 to c then minus ln p0 p upon p0 upper limit minus lower limit is equal to k1 into c upper limit minus lower limit Therefore, here on reality this, we have ln P0 upon P is equal to K1 into C by multiplying 2.303, we can convert it log to the base 10. Therefore, P K1 upon C, therefore log of P0 upon P is equal to k1 upon 2.303 into c and therefore this is a constant therefore this is absorbance directly proportional to c this is a bs law therefore here according to Laplace law absorbance is directly proportional to path length according to Laplace law sorry according to bs law absorbance is directly proportional to concentration Student now we derive both Lambert's law and Beer's law for determination of absorbance of a system as a function of path length as well as as a function of concentration. When we combine these two laws, then we have a Lambert's Beer's law. This Lambert's Beer's law is the combination of Lambert's law and Beer's law. Lambert's Beer's law is a combination of Lambert's law and Beer's law. According to Lambert's law, according to Lambert's law, absorbance is directly proportional to path length B. And according to Beer's law, according to Beer's law, 
absorbance is directly proportional to concentration and according to lambert's bs law lambert's bs law absorbance is directly proportional to product of path length and concentration therefore here in this case when we put some constant here proportionally constant then we have this equation like this a is equal to epsilon into b into c where this epsilon is called as molar absorptivity molar absorptivity that is the identity of substance determined by the wavelength of analysis suppose for example we have a solution of fixed concentration and fixed path length and when we measure its absorbance at different wavelength then we observe the absorbance different as the path length is fixed concentration is fixed we have different absorbance because we have different value of epsilon therefore epsilon is governed by governed by the wavelength of analysis wavelength of analysis that means here the wavelength at which the substance shows maximum absorbance at that value, at that wavelength this epsilon is a epsilon max epsilon max that will be at lambda max that is a wavelength of maximum absorbance where epsilon value found to be maximum and that is called as epsilon max in this case here in this equation generally for experimental purpose path length of the medium is constant and therefore generally this law is called as bs law when at constant path length Partly. Generally, we are measuring the concentration on the basis of measurement of absorbers. And when this path length is constant, then here absorbers is directly proportional to concentration. At that time, here this law is called as Pierce law. And here this Pierce law is useful for quantitative analysis in which capital A is absorbers, epsilon is molar absorptivity of substance. B is path length of the absorbing medium, and C is concentration of the solution in moles per liter. Where, where A is equal to absorbers, B is equal to path length, C is equal to concentration in moles per liter, and epsilon is a molar absorptivity. in liter per mole per centimeter therefore here these are the unit and here path length is in centimeter absorbers does not have unit student this law is called as bs law at constant path length and this law is useful for quantitative determination of analyte by using the absorbers but here according to this equation absorbance is directly proportional to concentration but practically we observe some deviation in this law and that is called as deviation from bs law therefore deviation from bs law according to bs law absorbers that should be directly proportional to concentration therefore here when we plot this graph we have a straight line passing through the origin but generally at higher concentration we have this curve deviated in this direction or sometime it get deviated in this direction here a is directly proportional to c at this curve but when we have a curve to downward direction then it is called as negative deviation and when the curve is to 
पॉजिटिव सॉरी कॉन्केव टू अपवर्ड डायरेक्शन देन इट इज कॉल्ड एज पॉजिटिव डेविएशन नेगेटिव डेविएशन मींस लेस एब्सॉर्बर्स वैल्यू एट हायर कंसंट्रेशन एंड हियर पॉजिटिव डेविएशन मोर एब्सॉर्बर्स वैल्यू एट लोअर कंसंट्रेशन दैट मींस absorbance value expected to be small in this case but it found to be more then it is positive deviation here absorbance value that should be more but it found to be less that is a negative deviation here the curve is a deviated to upward direction or to downward direction at higher concentration of analyte and this is related with the deviation of the bias law What are the cause for the deviation of Pierce's law that we discuss here? Deviation in Pierce's law generally occurs at higher concentration, where the relationship is get disturbed. Therefore, here Pierce's law is applicable to diode solution only. If concentration is very high, at higher concentration, sometimes the radiant power is not transmitted through the sample. at that time sample can act as a black body therefore here at that time we have infinity absorbers and therefore here bs law is applicable to lower concentration of the analyte now we discuss what are the cause for deviation cause for deviation in bs law bs law first cause when there is solute solute or a solute solvent interaction interaction then deviation occurs for example a dichromate solution when it is diluted with water it get converted to two chromate ion plus 2h plus i Here, if we are measuring dichromate solution, wavelength selected is 250 nanometer. But here, it shows chromate ion shows absorbance at 375 nanometer. Therefore, wavelength of absorption is get changed when we dilute the solution. Therefore, in this case, such a type of deviation we can does not cause if we use a acidic medium. in acidic medium this reaction hydrolysis reaction is not possible deviation also occurs when there is solute solvent interaction or solute is get polymerized polymerized then also deviation occurs for example c6h5ch2oh This is called as benzene, benzene alcohol, and this benzene alcohol, if it is in dimeric form, that is a tetramer, it absorbs at 300 nanometer, and it can be easily converted to its monomer C6H5CH2OH, and this will be absorbed at 276 nanometer. that means here at higher concentration monomer can be get converted into tetramer and therefore it absorbs at different wavelength this absorbs at different wavelength therefore wavelength of absorption changes that due to the deviation next cause for deviation if fluorescent impurities are present in the sample that gives the negative deviation fluorescent impurities fluorescent impurities gives the negative deviation negative deviation why this is so here the fluorescent impurities are present that emits a radiation at that time the outgoing radiation or its intensity found to be more than its x x that is expected value and therefore here in this case 
there is an indicative deviation. Then, if absorbing impurities are present, absorbing impurities are present, then it gives the positive deviation. Absorbing impurities gives the positive deviation because along with the analyte, impurities also absorbs and therefore absorbance is getting increased. The deviation also occurs when there is fluctuation in power supply. Fluctuation in power supply that also gives the deviation and deviation also occurs if medium is not homogeneous. Medium is not homogeneous means heterogeneous then scattering of light takes place. Light scatters and here that gives the deviation. Similarly, if monochromatic light is not used, monochromatic light is not used, then it gives the deviation. Therefore, these are the cause for the deviation in BS law. Student, we solve some problem based on calculation of absorbance, transmittance, and conversion of absorbance and transmittance into each order. First problem, a colored solution, a colored solution transmits, transmits 80% of incident light calculate, calculate its absorbance. We know that here in this case absorbance is minus log t. Therefore here t is equal to t is equal to 80 percent. Therefore here it is a percent t. Therefore t is equal to 80 divided by 100. Therefore t is equal to 0.8 and here a is equal to minus log of 0.8 and if we solve this absorbance here 0.969 therefore here a solution that transmits 80% of the incident radiation then its absorbance is 0.69 similarly we can solve second problem a solution shows absorbers 0.8 a solution shows absorbers 0.8 calculate 0.8 calculate its transmitters Therefore, here in this case, absorbance is given, we have to find out the transmitters. Therefore, here A is equal to minus log T. A is given as a point A equal to minus log T. Therefore, minus point A is equal to log T. And therefore, T is equal to anti log of anti log of minus. 0.8 and therefore finally when we find out this this equal to 0.1385 and when we multiply it with 100 the percent is equal to 15.85 percent in this way transmitters can be converted into absorbers and absorbers can be converted into transmitters therefore here we can solve next problem. Calculate, calculate the absorbance of solution. Absorbance of solution.
solution which transmits which transmits 0% of light that means total light is absorbed by the solution therefore here a is equal to log of p 0 upon p that solution if 100% light was on it a 100% are absorbed and 0% is transmitted therefore a is equal to log of 100 divided by 0 therefore a is equal to log of infinity and log infinity is infinity therefore absorbance is infinity therefore the black body that absorbs a hundred percent radiation therefore its absorbance is also infinity therefore a solution which transmits zero percent of incident radiation means all radiations are absorbed then its absorbance is infinity. Now we can solve one problem. Calculate the absorbance, absorbance of a reagent blank solution. Reagent blank solution. Reagent blank solution that is a solution used at the time of practical in order to adjust the 100% transmitters or zero absorbers. This solution is called as reagent blank. Reagent blank solution have an absorbance equal to zero and that we have to calculate here. Therefore, for reagent blank solution, A is equal to log of P0 upon P and here reagent blank solution transmits total radiations. Therefore, log of 100 divided by 100 therefore A is equal to log 1 and A is equal to 0 therefore reagent blank solution have an absorbance equal to 0 student this is about the laws of photometric analysis and we saw some problem based on this photometric analysis now we stop here thanks for joining me wish you all the best keep learning Happy Happy